Hi, this is Charles DiBartolo with the Better Staten Island. This is our first show, and I am happy to introduce Pete Finizzi from My Going Places Travel on Victory Boulevard. Uh, Pete I've known for about 15 years, and he's helped me with all my travel plans. And in the last couple of years, we've had quite a few issues with travel, and there's a lot of changes that are taking place and a lot of questions that people have, and we figured we'd educate Staten Island on what is going on in the travel industry. How are you, Pete? I'm great, and uh, thank you very much, Charlie, for inviting me here today. Uh, better Staten Island. Well, Going Places has been around for 48 years on Staten Island, so I'm, I'm more than happy to be here to help, and let's speak about some travel. Sounds good. So um, I know Pete from, uh, well, I would say that the last two years, we, um, we just, we had planned a trip to Europe, and then COVID hit. And Pete had talked my wife into travel insurance, which I never really thought about. And thank God we did it. <laughs> you, know, you know, travel insurance is one of those, it was considered the undercoating on a car. You know, get the undercoating to protect your car engine and your, the way your car's gonna last. And in today's world, especially if you, you look at the history of travel in the last 20 years from 9-11 on, uh, it seems like there's something affecting your travel ideas, what, what you want to do in travel. And insurance has become a big part of protecting those travel dollars, which is usually that extra money that a family has to spend. It's not money that you, you have to spend, right. you know, so. You well, know, let me ask you, does the insurance now, I know it did cover COVID. Does it still cover COVID? Well, um, there are always ex exclusions, but most of the services out there today, uh, the companies that I'm dealing with, uh, do protect you, but you're gonna have to provide the doctor's notes. You're gonna have to provide for immediate family emergencies, which are the two major coverages that you're gonna be purchasing if you do buy insurance. Um, some of the bigger companies that exist in the travel world have their own protection but the kicker with that is, God forbid they go out of business, right. you're in trouble. So travel insurance for what it is, is, is a really great thing. And uh, you know, you do need to talk to someone. Don't just haphazardly go after it or look to you know, provide your family with coverage. Get someone to talk to you about it and get some info. It, it's helpful. Makes sense, yeah. it definitely makes sense. So um, let's, I guess, first talk about if someone wants to travel, what do they need to have today? Well, you know, <laughs> that's one of the funnier lines that I've come up with, you know, and I'm, I guess I'm showing my age, but my big mantra right now is have vax, will travel. Due to all the international rules and regulations out there with COVID, especially affected by COVID, if you're not vaccinated, most of the more popular destinations are asking for full vaccination. Right. And you know, I understand there's a part of our population that does not want to be vaccinated. And I get it. And it's great, you know. But essentially, you're going to be limited to the U.S. of A. and maybe some other countries that just need the travel dollars. And, and they're bending the rules for their own sake. Now, can they get on a plane to go to those countries? Um, not, all, not all the time. Uh, there, there are rules and regulations that are changing constantly. Um, I know that uh, a big company that is, uh, you know, renting homes is May 31st. They're going back to the rules that stood before COVID. Right. Meaning if you cancel after you've rented a place, you're gonna be charged a percentage of that rental. So no matter what excuse you have, you know, what's happened is with the airlines, with the hotels, with the tour companies, and with the home rental business, is that they're, they're starting to get back to the way it was prior to COVID. You better have your ducks in a row, so to speak, you know, right. if you're going to travel, because unfortunately for us, it's not just pick up and go. We right. wish it was. What are those ducks? Uh, the ducks, uh, number one and foremost, I'll, again, I'll refer to it, have vax will travel. I mean, right. you really have to consider if you want to go to Europe, if you want to go to Asia, you want to go to Australia, you want to go you know, outside of this country, you have to be vaccinated. 
Um, I don't understand it if you don't want to go, but don't call up thinking that you can just get on a plane and go. Right. Um, I have to keep updating my awareness of what the rules and regulations are. So giving you a 100% answer, I don't have it today, right. but you know, it's something that and we so, should talk about. And so, for instance, you got your first vaccination, most people have gotten their second. What's the time frame of the booster today for travel? Is it six months? Is it a year? Do you know? Um, I don't think there's been any <clears throat> restriction. As long as you're vaccinated and have the card, that's your first step. Right. Um, then it's a matter of doing some homework on the destination you're going to. Okay. Uh, each destination seems to have some requirements. Um, for example, I'll use one that I just came across. Bermuda is asking for clients to register on a Bermuda site that wants them to download their IDs, their vaccination cards, and they're charging for it. So what's come out of this, as does with most of these, not just pandemics, but any kind of crisis or issue with travel, people are being asked to do a little bit more to make the travel go happen. Right. And they're also being charged by the different countries, fees. Wow. So what's happened is, and I get it, you know, that's, that's the world we're in. Travel and tourism is the number two industry in the world. And it costs money to keep And it keep costs all, money to keep this. doing it, exactly. So, you know, uh, I'm happy to be in this business for 48 years. Uh, I love travel and travel is the best education you're ever going to get. But it has become a little, you know, a little trying, especially with the COVID pandemic. Right, right. So what trips are you recommending? What, what countries are you recommending today for people to go to that are safe, good destination? And um, can people keep people happy? Well, because yeah, everybody's that, itching a, to get out. Yeah, there. no, you're right. And it's a great it's a great question, because if you think about travel, you, you watch TV and, you know, every other channel has this adventure show or it has this cultural destination. And of course, they touch on food and, and different types of food around the world. And, and you say to yourself, wow, I want to go. And I do. You know, I definitely do. And, and I can tell you of firsthand knowledge. The thing that you have to respect, though, is that each country is unto themselves. Like, so they would love it that you're coming but the new rules have made it a little trickier. So in terms of what more popular destinations are, I've had people in the last three months in Antarctica. Interesting. Yeah, I've had people now, those people, just to give you a little example, smaller crews, smaller group size, you know, not a mass market ship that goes out of New York City. Right. And meaning mass market ship is three or 4,000 people on the ship. This particular ship they were on had 400 people. So, and they had lots of restrictions. You know, Where did that go out of? It went out of uh, Argentina. Okay. And it goes from Argentina down to Antarctica and then comes back. And Argentina was giving some of the passengers some fits because they had regulations that right. were different than going to Antarctica. Right. So uh, each particular destination causes its own issues. Now, the good news is uh, river cruises have been going since last summer, so that's 2021. Um, river cruises being one of the topics I know you and I mentioned. Uh, the Rhine, the Danube, these cruises that bring you to these beautiful European destinations have slowly but surely begun to open up how they're doing it. They still want you to be vaccinated. Right. But they're, and they're probably going to ask you to be insured as well. Like they, they hustle, you know, it's a, it's a hustle, it's business, right. you know, but, but the insurance will protect you, God forbid, something comes up that you can't control. Right. Now, what age group do you recommend for the river cruises? Uh, the river cruises is probably a 50 year old and plus crowd. Okay. Uh, usually someone who's worked a lot or, you know, is in the p process of retiring. Uh, not all of the customers are that way. You know, I was on it. I'm not retired. Uh, two years prior to COVID with a group of 36 people. Uh, and everybody enjoyed the idea of going into the location, getting off of the river cruise and walking in the town. Right, you know, that experience right. is pretty cool. Whereas if you fly in an airport, you still have to go from the airport to the hotel. Right. And then after you get to the hotel, it might be three or four hours that you're on the street. 
Right. And a river cruise, you get to do that now, literally when you arrive. With the big cruise ships on the sea, we're talking 14 floor cruises right. today. How many people in, a, in, a, in an ocean liner? Uh, three to 4,000 in some cases. And in a river cruise, what are we talking uh, about? You're going to see about four to 500 max. Oh, uh, you so might see a difference. little. Big difference. Much more and that's, laid back. And, uh, yeah, and the customers who are going on those are regularly big time travelers. You know, these are people who travel the world. They expect to travel. They've worked their lives. They're, they're, they're expecting to travel. Right. The difference between the big cruises, though, nowadays is uh, take a look at commercials. And, you know, I know we've touched on this. Right. Um, they're not showing you a lot of pictures of the ship. Right. <laughs> they're showing you all the things that the ship is going to give you ability to do. And I have mixed feelings about it. I love cruising. I think it's a nice way to go. You unpack once and you have entertainment. They have food. They got gambling. They got activities. They, they have all kinds of things for you to do. But the reality is that you, you get on board these ships, there's four to 5,000 people on board. Right. Now, you'll find your quiet areas. You will be able to find a, a very nice trip, but they're also going to demand you're vaccinated. Right. And we're going to come back to that, I think, throughout this yeah, discussion. Yeah, it, it seems to be the trend. <laughs> yeah. I get that. Yeah. I get that. So, so we river cruises, a little bit more laid back. Right. Uh, the, o the, the ocean cruises, I'm finding that it's like the average Joe now they're marketing to rather than well, the elite, which yeah. used to be this scenario. Listen, <clears throat> if you think about when Going Places started, 1974, Jim and Rose Finizzi started this in the basement of their house on Kroll Avenue in Staten Island. How many years ago? Uh, 48 years wow. this year. So the deal is that in those days, if you went to a bank, there were actually travel clubs that you could save, had savings account <laughs> that you'd put 10, $20 in weekly. Right. And you would have at the end of 36 or so weeks monies that they called the travel club. Do they do that anymore? Well, no, I don't think you're going to see that in today's banking <laughs> no, world. No, I don't. Enough of that money. I know that. <laughs> but, but what you're going to see is, and, and the other part of it was that you had people come in a year in advance, year and a half in advance, two years in advance to plan that special vacation. Today it's instant gratification. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, our phone has become a controlling kind of computer in our hand that tells you you got to do it now. Right. And that's not always the case. You know, I mean, right. the reality is that travel is a beautiful thing and you should plan. Going last minute's fun, don't get me wrong, but you can't go last minute and expect it to be less expensive. There's this misnomer because some people out of the hundreds of people, thousands of people who travel, get a break, they get lucky. They don't know the back office or the back reasons why they got lucky. They got a better deal because they booked it two weeks prior to the trip. They don't know that a hundred person group canceled. Right. So seats opened up, the airline had to get rid of those seats. Right. So, and that's not really my business. You know, my business right. is not to educate you. I don't, I, I don't want to mislead people and say, you're always going to get a deal if you wait. Right. And I sure as hell am not going to tell them to go online and look at online agencies who are all tro throwing prices at you that look good. Right. But you still got to go through the whole formal pr process of it. Right. You know, so when you get to the end, all of a sudden the price isn't what they said in the beginning. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, you know. And I want to talk more about that. <laughs> what I want to do, though, is we do need to take a break. Okay. And then we're going to get back with um, trends in the industry, good. what's happening, and this all of that. Great. We're going to take a break right now, and thank you. We'll talk to you in a minute. Fantastic. Hi, this is Charles DiBartolo, and we are back at A Better Staten Island with Pete Finizzi and Going Places Travel. And um, we're, we were just discussing phones. Right. So, you know, the way people use cell phones today and self-service. And, you know, I come from an era that you come from where we expect service. And I think today people have been trained, and, and you know, because I do four of your websites, you know, I see the right. way you do service versus the way the large companies are offering service. Right. And um, they've been trained to accept no service. And that drives me insane. So let's, let's go there. Yeah, this. no, I'm with you. Um, that's one of the biggest issues or biggest 
I guess, uh, fights that I have. Um, if someone contacts me, my mantra is to call them within, you know how people say, we'll call you back in 24 hours? I try to call them back like within two hours, right? if not sooner. Just so they know there's a live person interested in what they're calling me about. Right. I think if you don't show that effect, then where is the service? You know, what, what, what service is there on the phone? Now, it's instant gratification, no doubt, Charlie. We both know this. You right. know, we're in business and we, we get it. But for 48 years and the fact that I can still talk to you confidently about the travel industry today right. after COVID is because just the last three or four days, the people calling me, coming into my office, are just looking to get it done and they don't want to look on their phone. Well, what's the other thing is you know me and you know what I like. Right. And I could call That's a, a cruise point. ship and yeah. they can jam me into one of their cruises. Right. But they won't tell me, Charlie, that cruise is not right for you. Right. You really need to do this. Right. Um, there's nobody around to do that anymore. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the bigger ships and the biggest cruise lines are doing these schedules based on where they can dock their ship and re retool it, get the fuel, get the food reimbursed. You know, get so sometimes you're seeing, for example, there's a, a cruise going out in the beginning of June that I just received an email to go up to Canada. And it's four days, three nights, or five days, four nights. And it's inexpensive. Right. But it's it's not gonna be and enjoy it. Like, where are you going? What are you doing? You know, right. it's, so, and I, don't get me wrong. New England's beautiful. Nova Scotia's beautiful. But if you're looking to go to Bermuda or going south to a beach, it's not still warm yet up there, you know, in the right. beginning of June. Right. So it's a great deal, but it's not for <laughs> that's everybody. That's the reason why it's that's a great right. deal. That's right. And the other thing is what your time is worth. Oh, that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> I believe in that wholeheartedly. Uh, if you ask any of the independent agents who work under our roof, uh, because that's how we exist. We have independent, independent agents who act as their own travel agents, travel services, under the roof of Going Places Travel. Right. So the thing is, um, my biggest thing with them is time management. Right. Teach a customer that if they're specific with you, you can be specific with them. You know, I love it when someone comes in and I'm happy they're calling me, don't get me wrong. But they say, yeah, I'll go sometime in August. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's nice. When, when do, and then I give them the time that they want right. and undoubtedly it's no good. You know, right. because, it, you know, so they have to help me by being a little specific. The more information I can gather from a potential client, the better it is for service as well. And again, back to the phone issue, the reality is yes, our kids, 20 years from now, will only know service based on how they were treated by a phone or by something they applied online. Which is no service. Which is really not service the way you and I think. No. Um, and like I, I, you know, I think I mentioned earlier was, you know, in the 70s, even in the early 80s, people used to plan trips for a year in advance which was a beautiful thing for business because you had deposits come in, it made your whole work kind of life work right, properly. Right. When things come in last minute, it's all at once. So you're all or nothing. Right. And it does change the whole perspective. The beautiful thing about using an agent is that you can put a small deposit down. You don't have to pay for it all, like right. a lot of online agents exactly. want you to pay sure. for it. Sure. So that's something a lot of people don't understand and don't realize. You got to call, or you got to at least check into us. Okay, I want to hit three genres, but before we do, you used the phrase before, people are not freight. And I right. want you to go over that because it's kind of interesting. Well, yeah, the interesting thing is one of the uh, newest lines, it's an Italian line, and I'm not going to mention them, but I'm just saying they're the largest shipping company in the world. Mm -hmm. And they're building during COVID, and they did not shirk from this. They did not take away from this plan. They're building four brand new mega ships. Right. And I keep saying to myself, wow, you know, what's going on right. here? Travel's not growing at that cruise rate. Cruise lines, yeah, and they're <laughs> building these ships. I'm saying, who's, been? well, there's two things going on. One is they are counting on society buying into it. Right. Okay. But they're also counting on selling it 
to a clientele that doesn't know any different. So what I meant by the shipping aspect was ship, when you send a package through one of the overnight services and you buy something, that package doesn't yell at the driver and say, what are you doing? You're off, you're not on, you know, you're not on the right route or you're, right. you're late or and the package doesn't say anything. <laughs> if you're a client in the travel business and your flight is delayed, are you going to say something? Absolutely. <laughs> if you're on the cruise ship and your agent told you you're getting a balcony cabin and they gave you four walls like this room that we're in, right. are you going to say something? Right, <laughs> right. There you go. And, you know, and if, if you're delayed in, in Italy, for example, the train is late, which happens every day. Right. So you are get you gonna to be get, that guy. Are you going to learn to be, are you going to learn to have a glass of wine and enjoy the moment? <laughs> or are you going to learn that... My phone said it was leaving at nine o'clock. How come it's leaving at 10? Right, right. The phone's not gonna answer you. Right. Because the client is doing the talking. So the reality is that's kind of what I met with that. You know? Okay. So let's talk about a couple of travel genres. I'll let you start. I'm looking at you know tropical versus Europe versus adventure. What would you like to open with? Um, there are two interesting areas like honeymooners have begun to just think undoubtedly this is where they're going. Uh, one is the Maldives, which is in the Indian Ocean. You, okay. know, you fly through Dubai in some cases to get there. Dubai is another one of those exotic places. Uh, and, uh, and the other one would be the Fiji Islands, Bora Bora, you know. The nice. You know, when I think tropi tropical, I haven't thought of those places. Right. Well, so. these are the ones that are more exotic. Right. And they're attracting the younger generation because of all the mass media and all the travel and tourism shows that are promoting them. Right. Um, two instances that I can go to unequivocally. President Ronald Reagan and his wife Nancy went to, I think it was a G7 meeting in right. the early 1980s. And the meeting was held in Cancun, Mexico. Now, before Cancun, Mexico, Nobody heard of Cancun. no one ever heard of it, okay? <laughs> the place that everyone went to in the 70s was Acapulco. Right, right. Yep. Elvis Presley did a movie at so Acapulco. So it's coming from yep. the media. So the media, right. so Ronald Reagan, Nancy Reagan, walking the beach in Cancun, and lo and behold, what's it, 40 years later, right. Cancun is like the go-to, inex inexpensive, I shouldn't say inexpensive, it's reasonably priced, seven day vacation getaway, where you get all the food included, it's beautiful resorts, and the flight's pretty standard, pretty easy. A lot of different gateways from the US get right to Cancun. Right. But there's always a start like that. That's interesting. The Maldives, just to bring you, was I believe one of the, the uh, Queen's sons went there for a honeymoon. There you go. I think Charles, I think Charles and Diane. Royalty. I'm not your royalty. Right. And believe it or not, that's what draws people to it. It helps right. to advertise and market the area. Sure. Sure, everybody so. wants to be royalty. Right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Travel. All right, Europe? What, do we, what Europe, do we like in Europe? Europe has been open. Um, all the concerns about the current state of affairs in your Eastern Europe and what's happening there, of course, you know, we're all concerned, uh, especially in the travel world, because we don't want another. Safest place in Europe? What do you like? Oh, man. COVID, uh, I guess, you know what, if you're going to say safe right now, currently, you got to say Italy, you got to say Portugal, you have to say uh, Spain, you know, you have to say most of these countries have held pretty close to the vest. They're, they're asking you to do certain things, but overall the safety has been good. How's the UK now? UK and Ireland, matter of fact, that's one of the trips you were hoping to right. take. Right, yeah, that's why and I'm it's, asking. it's wide open. Matter of <laughs> fact, my niece is in college in Scotland, so I mean, right. so I know that she seems to be doing so okay, they, you know, and, good. and it's, it seems to be active. And I do have some people going to Scotland uh, this summer. All yeah, right. so and and now your that. specialty, uh, which I, I'd like you to spend a little time on, is adventure. Because you're, you're an adrenaline addict yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I listen, I, I do, I'm not a good sitting on the beach guy, but I know people love it, and I get it. And, and it's nice to have a drink and jump in the ocean. I get it. Uh, but some of the exotic places that I've been to and that I love, 
happened to be the best educational experiences. They were basically what I call my grad school after my college years. Right. Uh, Nepal, which I went to in 1984 uh, and walked around as the youngest participant in the group. I was 26 and I was right. the youngest one in my group. So tell us a little about Nepal. What's, Nepal, what's at that, in those days, you know, the biggest thing to learn was when you got off the plane in Kathmandu, you know, you walk through the customs and immigration, which I had no clue about at the time because I had done some skiing in Colorado, but I hadn't been outside the country really. And, uh, and you get off and walk through immigrations and to the right, there's this pile of like duffel bags and bags. Well, that was the luggage. <laughs> Right. And you had to go in and find your... Really? Yeah, yeah. Wow. This is 1984. Things have now. changed. Is, things right. have changed, yes. Right. Um, one of the more recent ones, uh, well, recent, uh, we've been to Tanzania with Kilimanjaro with my daughter. Uh, What's the elevation and, there? That was almost 20,000 feet. Nice. Uh, which was That's... great. Yeah, and that was an achievement that I was able to do with my oldest daughter. And, uh, and then Machu Picchu, which is a bucket list place, which you don't have to do. We did the Inca Trail. Uh, Gabby, uh, my uh, youngest daughter. So, so did you Alex, have to train oldest. for those two? Um, I did train. Uh, training meaning that I was moving my body pretty much five to six days out of seven a week. Meaning right. if I wasn't playing some kind of tennis or doing some kind of racquetball, I was doing hiking so on these my are, own. These are not things you do with a heart condition. Yeah, right? it, you really, <laughs> okay. you could probably get yourself in some decent shape. Uh, acclimatization going up to elevations that high is always an issue and it doesn't mean that you're out of shape it just means it can affect you at any time right uh, one of the current trips that I'm hoping to do with Alex and Gabby is in Ecuador the Cotopaxi volcano it's an active volcano right. that is almost 20,000 feet as well and I'm planning on doing that in hopefully September October nice. with my daughters both daughters at the same time so I'm really like kind of doing my walks and my two, three there miles you a you day. you got to get fit again. Do, yeah, just I, being ready. Yeah, exactly. That's so, good. But, I mean, adventure has become a hot topic. Um, Gabby's been to the Azores where they climb down these waterfalls. Uh, not not right. crazy high, but you do climb. Give me one local adventure place for people that don't want to well, get out of the country. Well, you know, that's true. Um, you know, I was upstate uh, in New York. There's a, a couple of caverns and a couple of different locations, national parks, that are fabulous in terms right. of activity. Woodstock, fabulous location to go. Not a real. I'm gonna have to. Come. We're gonna have to do this again. Okay, great. Um, but uh, it's always a pleasure because there's so many exciting no, places to great. go. No, this is great. I really enjoy. And uh, I just like to say uh, thank you to everyone for um, tuning in to our first uh, episode. And um, we're gonna have you back. And uh, we want to thank you for being here. Um, thank you so much. Hey, thanks, better Staten Island. We love it. That's good. That's a good.